Why hello YouTube. I want to express my hopes that everybody's had an excellent weekend this weekend. Uh, we sure have in every way, shape, and form. Everything's went extremely well for us. Uh, so we hope everything's going really good for all you guys. Um, the main ingredient in the cake was last night. Um, our favorite fighter, Danny Christie, winning and winning in such a good fashion against a really, really game opponent. So our hats are off to his opponent, uh, which was round. And uh, Danny took him out. I, I believe maybe I was 10 or 12 seconds off. Uh, I said I thought he would take him down in a minute and a half. Uh, I'm going to tell you why I thought this in just a second. Because it's very old school. And you don't really have to be standing in front of or spending a lot of time, personal time, uh, with this old school thought process. I don't think anyway. Well, I know not. Last night's proof in the pudding. But uh, Joe and I both thought, uh, we looked at the other guy at what little bit that we could find on him. And we thought that, both thought that Danny was going to win very quickly and early in the first round. And uh, these were, I believe, two-minute rounds, and I believe it was 12 to 15 seconds remaining uh, when it was wisely called off. Uh, so I'm going to talk about several things in this video. First thing is congratulations to Danny Christie. Uh, guys, if you hadn't been around or in combat sport uh, or, you, or you're kind of new to it, uh, practice some things but don't compete, you know, things in general like that. Uh, or you're, or you've never been in the aura of the sport, it's hard to understand coming off of a loss how difficult it is to regroup, resettle the soul, uh, resettle the thought processes and to obtain confidence in calmness and chaos after a defeat. And Danny suffered a big defeat. The defeat was, it was not good. Uh, and the psychology and what you have to do to overcome big defeats, uh, such as just getting knocked out or pummeled uh, or overwhelmed and, and suffering a defeat, and then to come back like Christy did last night, it's a big feat. More often than not, the fighter themselves don't realize the what they've accomplished there until they get well older, well older, and well wiser. Uh, sometimes when we are going through things, they're more extreme and they're worse. And then we look back on them and say, well, that wasn't that bad. That tends to be the case most often. However, uh, on some of the things 
that we accomplish uh, we look back on and it was a bad thing but we can't fully appreciate what we did to overcome that and those are the big things in life sports are sport boxing's boxing bare knuckles bare knuckle uh, MMA is MMA uh, you suffer a loss there you move on but when you are continuing in the sport these things are monumental losses are and to overcome them uh, is something else because you can just be totally demoralized over a bad decision but uh, when you get stopped it's hard to overcome and continue so hats off uh, and what a great job uh, that Danny did what a great job unbelievable unbelievable uh, Danny, my, and Joe, and Carmen, our hats off to you, sir. Big time. Mad respect going on here. Um, all right, now I want to move on to some other things. Um, uh, I just watched a... Uh, biography I guess a biography video that had uh, several trainers on it uh, the one they would refer to most was Custy Amato but there were many other trainers and uh, not many other several other trainers uh, trainers referring to him it centered around the Amato but uh, uh, the there were other trainers and things they say and uh, the lineage there and uh, I was shocked and Joe's a little shocked too uh, and I, I talked to him a little bit earlier about the you know, everything this this great one said, I've told Joe. Everything this great one said, I've told Joe. Uh, and so on and so forth down the line. And I'm looking and I'm, I, I'm as shocked as he is. Uh, when I first look, I'm like, God, I tell, I tell Joe and the other guys this all the time all the time and uh, and so I was talking with Joe about it a little later after my shocking of watching it and I said son this is just old school versus I won't even call it new school but old school versus whatever's going on today and that's what I'll just say about that to whatever's going on today but uh, a lot of the things that uh, for example some things that now Diamato was born in 1908 I was born I'll say roughly 55 to 60 years later or no, oh no, uh, 50, 45 to 50 years later, and uh, things that Diamato's Italian dad told him, uh, my English dad told me, and I, and you know, there's a 50 year difference there, plus or minus, I believe. Uh, maybe 55 years. I'm not going to give up my age because I get paranoid about online ID theft. But uh, uh, 
So anyway, that generation, I'll say my dad's generation, and the generation before it, there was a lot of the same stuff going from father to son to father to son to father to son. And nobody's getting that today. Uh, it got lost, I truly believe, from my generation on to the younger generation. I've had Joe late in life. And, uh, you know, when he was born. And uh, the, the difference between him and... And, and his friends are, is, would be this. When their dads are talking, nobody's listening. When Joe's dad's talking, everybody's listening. Uh, even their dads are listening. So, it's just, it's, I, I don't think it's greatness involved there. I just think it's uh, differences involved there. So, uh, something else I wanted, I wanted to talk about here. This is really to young boxers and really anybody that's real good in the game that other people look at. Uh, that it, it would be really focused to those two groups. Um, number one. You really never know who you may influence. Uh, you may you you may go through life when you know I've done this, I've done this, I've reached this pinnacle. Uh, what whatever's going on with you in your life, and you're you may be affecting so many people. And you're just unaware of it because nobody talks about these things. But I, 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 I will. I am. And uh, I, I want to talk about a situation and how you look, you you listen, and what's coming in, what you can do with it. Uh, so really, if a, really a good focus of this onto the young, the young boxer, um, you. Uh, well, I'm just going to give you the example, the, the biggest example here. Um, Joe and I, uh, almost a year ago. I don't think it's been a year ago. Maybe. 10, I'll say 10 to 14 months ago, because I don't know, maybe it was, a, a, I'm thinking it was a little, a little under a year, but it may have been a little over a year, uh, we're watching, uh, Joe was watching Danny Christie do some pad work, and Joe's like, man, come look at this, Dad, and what he was doing, uh, I don't really, I wouldn't call a faint, uh, but there are elements of fainting all over what he was doing. And Joe, Joe wrote or commented to him, hey, we're going to be working on this. Maybe both of us did. And he was like, Dear boy, this takes years, this takes years, like hundreds or thousands of hours of uh, practice to achieve uh, but this is how things work out see uh, Joe hasn't achieved that yet that specific thing he hasn't achieved uh, working on it yeah a lot uh, but still hasn't achieved it not not to his expectations in himself. I'll put it that way. So, and until he feels he achieve, achieves it and can apply it, then he knows he hasn't achieved it. So, 
that's the script we go by when assessing things like that. But let me tell you what did get achieved by that. Uh, what what got achieved, which is the I I truly believe, which is the greatest strength Joe has, is uh, a mere. I'm saying that with an M. A mere cock of the right and giving an overhand right. And the way he does that uh, is is unbelievable. I don't I don't know of anybody else that, that does that like he does. Um, so what you what you are putting out there, others may be taking and turning into grand, very big big things for themselves and their lives that may be taken to championships, uh, board posi- positions at big corporations, whatever. So we have to be aware uh, that a lot of things that, w- that, that maybe we show, uh, the gifts that when, we, when we're showing something, the, gif- the gifts that uh, can be given... And to the kids out there, grab hold of things that you see like that. Grab them. Pull them in. Uh, Take the gift of the sight and of the sound and uh, use the gift. It may not be that you can do exactly what the champion's doing. But it may give you something that's as good as the champion. Or maybe you can apply something a little bit different. And maybe you can't, you'll never be able to do it. Maybe. But you may be able to tweak something that will be your power A game thing. That takes you to a championship. So uh, being aware is monumental in the psychology of all sport, just being aware. And that is being lost today, is being badly lost. Um, So I just thought I would mention that as well. Uh, the, The combat sport, our striking sport, especially boxing, it's a mind game, you know. Uh, I was telling Joe, uh, and I had heard this from my dad. Told me this. His dad told him this from World War One, and that was you. You got two guys in a foxhole. See, so Diamato heard it, and it's the psychology of it. Watching that video has just brought these a lot of this full circle because. I'm looking at it like, well, this guy's saying the same thing, you know, my dad said, or that I told Joe two years ago. And I did tell Joe this story a long time ago. You got two guys in a foxhole, and one's a coward, and one's a war hero. Who's the war hero? The guy that gets out and saves somebody or gets a message over there or uh, kills the enemy. And the coward stays in there in the foxhole cowering. Uh, There's but one difference between those two soldiers. One of them manned up in the decision to do something. And one of them did not. But both guys were scared to death equally. So uh, if you're in this game and you don't get scared and you don't get nervous wrecky here and there and and things like that, uh, 
I always say you need to be in a mental hospital. Uh, there's another thing I seen there, and because uh, you see a lot of people today, I don't get scared. I don't. I'm like, oh boy, get out of here with this. Uh, but that, that was another Diamato thing that he mentioned. That was just things I was taught as a child, not in boxing, not in nothing, just a father teaching his son that learned from his father. Uh, and that is the man that if a man tells you that they're not scared and then you believe upon that 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 what they're telling you is fact, you better be scared. And that man needs to be in a mental hospital. He needs some big psychological help. Uh, the fear is what you can turn that can drive you. And uh, give you the protection you need. Give you the, uh, the, the courage you need uh, to overcome. And you, and you got to have that. If you're in this game, you got to have it. So... Anyway, those are a few of the things I talked about. This week, uh, we are going to, uh, I don't know if a lot of you know this, because we don't show a whole lot of what we do. And probably never will, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work out. But, uh, uh Joe works on several styles. He works on distance styles, hit and run styles, a whole bunch of different things. Uh, what you see Joe doing uh, is kind of the peekaboo style. And we, we work on the peekaboo style. Uh, we do a lot of work on that style. Uh, but we do a lot of the Cuban style as well. Uh, and we're going to take this week's just going to be peekaboo, 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 and because uh, we're overdue for that. We've we've been doing some uh, uh, Cuban style training for quite some time now, so I want to switch over. Well, you can't do that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Your your coach don't know that, but yeah, you can. Uh, a fighter can't have it. Uh, yeah, he can. Yeah, he can. People around you and you believe you can't, but you can. Uh, you, you need styles make fights, and let me tell you something, folks. Uh, it's good to have backup plans, but if you don't have nothing to back up to, uh, to change, you won't win. And I would probably guess in my history knowledge of boxing, since the 1950s, nobody's been able to change a style mid-drift in the ring. Notice I said since some point in the 1950s. That means they were able to prior to that. They they'd change things up to be able to win. Uh, you do hear styles make fights, but what you don't hear is it's good to have a couple of styles. Uh, we're going to end up in the end point of it having three styles that hopefully can be mastered enough. The, the Of course, the one style will be the master style, but there'll be two backups that can be mastered enough that if this style has to be changed, uh, it can be changed mid-drift in the ring. And these are things that are just lost to the art. They're, they're lost, people. Uh, you got a lot of trainers running around today. they got a specific way of doing something. If you deviate just a centimeter off of that, oh, my God, you're going to get killed. Oh, my God, you can't do that. And they have no idea what they're doing, and they don't produce much anything anyway. So, 
it's another thing trainers need to learn people that should be my oldest children should be changing and adapting and trying to adapt to different things a different mode of thinking uh, because after our generation it just phew, everything seem, seems to have went wayward uh, in major major ways so we got a lot of work that we need to do on that so we wish everybody a good Saturday afternoon. It's about 3.30 here in Columbia. Uh, we hope that everybody has a good evening. And we hope that you have a good, blessed week. And remember, if you have Christ, greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. And with him, all things are possible. So... Remember that, and blessings to you all.